Good morning guys, Jordan here from Artisan Electrics. Welcome back to the channel. It is day two here on the Scout Hut installation and I'm gonna show you what I'm up to today. It is lighting today mainly. By the way, I almost forgot to say, today's video is sponsored by Rhino Trade Insurance. So I've just been able to secure a deal with them because I've renewed my public liability insurance and I've finally got tools in van insurance which I've been meaning to do for ages. Um, if you go in the description, you'll find a discount code from Rhino Trade Insurance. They've already got amazing prices anyway. When I did a price comparison, their quotes beat by far my previous quote, which was from Direct Line, which I had last year, and that was already uh, the cheapest one out there. So Rhino Trade Insurance is a company run by tradesmen, for tradesmen, and they won't mess you about. They'll give you a really good offer price-wise, but also the service is just beyond excellent so go to the link in the description use my discount code and then you can get some money off your renewal for your public liability insurance tools and van insurance uh, legal cover all that kind of stuff so one of the things that I had going on uh, which I had to figure out was in this storeroom I showed you on part one there's these two lights that basically um, we're not earthed. Well, there's 90 volts live to earth when we, when we measured. So I've taken the fitting, I've opened the fittings up, confirmed there's no earth continuity there at all. Um, but there's a junction box somewhere. So what I did is just, I've taken this fitting down from the ceiling just to have a look because I figured maybe it's just behind the light fitting or something. It's weird because this fitting has got um, let me flip the camera around and I'll show you. So it's got earth wires in it. You can see there it's got two lives, two CPCs and two neutrals, but the CPCs are not connected back to the main earth terminal. This one has a bit of new cable and then a connector block <coughs> and probably a bit of old cable. So I'm imagining that this cable goes from there straight to this fitting, but from this fitting, um, the switch here has a bit of three core, which they've just not used the blue wire. So there's definitely a junction box somewhere. So as I say, it's not above the light fitting. So what I decided to do was take down some of the plasterboard on the ceiling because it's just screwed up. And I've done that. So I've taken this plasterboard down here above the switch because I figured hopefully the junction box will be above the switch. And then I found this old boarding underneath, which they've just covered over. I drilled a hole up here, put my hand in, and I found some wires in here. So then I felt across, and this is what I found. A uh, junction box, as I guessed. So this is the three core from the switch. This, really dodgy, has been just lying around in the ceiling live for goodness knows how long. And then presumably we've got in here a feed in and then the switch uh, live going out to the light fitting. So I'm going to just get this junction box open and see what's going on inside. But I would imagine that this is probably where the break is in the earthing. Right, yeah, so as I suspected, basically they've just cut off all the earths and not connected them together. So such a annoying and stupid thing um, but anyway it should be fairly easy to rectify hopefully there's a bit of slack on these cables I can pull through strip them back a little bit further and then connect the earths together and hopefully I'm gonna I'm gonna have an earth there I'll take a reading on the main incoming cable which is the permanent feed and if there's an earth on there then I can just connect that through to all the other cables and just get rid of this because this is complete bodge but at least I found it. I was a bit worried because up above it's all like um, ply boarding and it's all been glued down and everything and it would have been a nightmare to get the boards up. So I was glad that I was able to do it from below. So I've got the cable stripped back now and there's just about enough length to get some connections on the CPC conductors. So that's good. And uh, what I'm going to do is use one of these little mini uh, Vargo boxes. So because it's tight for space. Um, I can just take the, the feed-in cable in that side and then the other two cables out the other side 
and use these little uh, Wago lighting connectors to connect everything up and then that should do the trick. Right, the plot thickens. So I've done the junction box there, but actually the incoming feed doesn't have an earth in either. So when I've connected it up, there's still no earth at this light fitting. So I'm trying to trace it back now. So I thought, okay, I'll check these lights because they're on the same circuit, just to double check to see if they've got an earth and they don't either. So there's probably another junction box somewhere. So I'm really at a bit of a loss as to what to do, to be honest, because this is just gonna, this is getting a bigger and bigger project now. I don't know where the junction box will be for this. And obviously this is a finished ceiling, so I can't just whip a bit of um, plasterboard down. Up in the loft, as you can see, it's, um, it's all boarded with, this kind of marine ply stuff and um, you know it's glued down and everything it's just be a nightmare to get it up so what I'm thinking to do now is maybe just drill through somewhere and just tag an earth off another circuit somewhere so that at least everything's earthed it's not ideal but it's the only way I can think to do it really right so this downlight has an earth and the joists go this way as far as I can tell so hopefully I can, I can use my rods and just fish through there and get to that point and just fish a 1.5 mil earth wire through and then that'll earth everything as long as from there to the next set of lights it is actually connected we'll see Right, a little update for you. So I took that down light down, did have an earth, but I can't get through here with my rods because this is a, uh, it's got a solid joist going across the top of it. Um, also, I tested between the switch and the light fitting and there's no CPC continuity between the two either. And then from this light fitting to the other light fitting in there, which is the first one I started at, doesn't have any CPC continuity either. So there's another junction box here basically, uh, which I would guess is probably in the same kind of location, just up above the switch somewhere here in the ceiling. But I have no idea to be honest. Um, so I'm gonna just cut a hole in the ceiling like I did on the other side and, and hope that I might manage to find a junction box. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to think again. But this is really annoying. Really, really annoying. Right, so I've drilled this hole and you're not gonna believe this. There are moments when you just luck out. And this is one of them. That is exactly what I found when I drilled the hole. Literally, that's how I found it. I've not put my hand up there or anything. Jackpot. So uh, yeah, let's pull it down and have a look. But it looks like it's basically the same situation as what I had on the other side. It's just um, junction box and they've not connected the earth. So hopefully this is the last one and I can sort this out and then everything will be earthed up. But I'm gonna open the lid and have a look now. Okay, so this is the junction box. It was one of those old school ones with a screw on lid no actual physical screw just a twist on lid and as you can see they've done exactly the same thing just cut the earths off not bothered with them the cables feel quite tight though so i think it's going to be a bit of a struggle to extend them and connect them together but i'm going to try my best and see how it goes so the wires are really short on this they're just they're not long enough to be able to get to them together nicely and do a junction box here it's just too tight so what I'm thinking of doing there's a void all the way along here to that trunking so I'm going to fish in a new feed for the lighting circuit to here then this one goes it along and through to that other junction box on the other side of the wall that I've just redone so I'm hoping that I can re pull this one as well put a new cable in and then this one it literally just goes to the light fitting here so that should be easy enough to pull in as well I'll leave the switch cable in because that's buried in the wall, but that's kind of long enough to, to play with anyway. 
but these three cables basically I'm just going to rewire them and then everything's long enough and I can do a proper nice junction box wargo box here and then everything's maintenance free and hidden up in the ceiling right so I know I've talked about this in past videos but for the new subscribers I just thought I'd mention uh, the super rod mega set is what I use for my rodding uh, needs and it's absolutely brilliant right so what I've done is I've put two lengths of red rod in there red ones are the slightly stiffer ones and then it's got this kind of like uh, bead chain on the end and then here I've got my magnet and so all I have to do now is poke the magnet in there and then fish the bead chain down you can see that and that will enable me to pull the end of the rod down then and then what I'm going to do is attach this, which is a, a cable sleeve. It goes over the cable, uh, screws onto the end of the rod, and then I'll use the rod to just pull the cable back. And that'll be it. Super easy. This Super Rod Mega Set saves me so much time and energy trying to fish cables. It's just an absolutely brilliant bit of kit. It's my favourite tool that I have out of everything in my van, I have to say. Right, so I've got the new feed in. That went in easily with my rods and I've got the other feed going across the other set of lights that pulled in really easily as well. So, so far so good. So now I've just got to take this light fitting down and then just pull in a new bit from there to there. And then I can do the junction box here, close everything up, fill in that hole and move on to the next job. This has taken me longer than I expected though. It's like two and a half hours now I've been here. This is really annoying. So that light is down, new cable is in across to there, so that's all my cabling ready now. I've stripped everything back, ready to terminate it. I'm gonna put it into this Wago box, junction box. Um, just a little thing a lot of people don't know about these. In order for them to be maintenance free, you've got to put a cable tie through this little hole, this little slot here. Um, so it's just a technicality really, but that's what you're supposed to do in order for them to actually comply with being maintenance free junction boxes. I've got these connectors to go in. Let me know in the comments what kind of junction boxes you usually use. Do you use Wargos? Do you use other push fit connections or do you use something else? I'd love to know. Right, so we're all up and running now. Junction boxes are done, everything's working, tested it out, everything's earthed. So I'm happy that I managed to get that sorted. This light's on boards back up so that's cool I've just got to fill in that hole over there and um, just leaving that off to do a final earth loop impedance at the end point over there uh, I've changed the switch here as well so that's done put a new back box and a compression gland there just to take the cable in properly so that's neatened that up I've just moved it slightly um, 